Here we go. Young boys nil. Aston Villa three. Dining at the elite table. We sat down. We have ate our meal. And we are continuing where we left off. Pretty much not the last time, but the time before that in 82. We just got some about this about this tournament, that little sprinkling of stardust. We just go full force with it. And I'm just so buzzing that we've just got off the mark on a very positive. Joined by Ryan. How are you doing, mate? Absolutely buzzing, mate. You say we've had a, we've dined at the table. We've had an absolute <laughs> feast, mate. We've gone large. We've gone large. <laughs> I mean, I just feel, well, t to be fair, I, I just feel immensely proud. I was so proud when those players were lining up here in that anthem. And I was just really pleased with the professional performance that we put in. We've saw what we were like in the Conference League. We had to adapt. We had to learn. We went to a hostile place the first time in that. And we found it really difficult. But today, there has been a professional, a calm, a composed, and an adaptive period for us in that game because we had to adapt to the pitch. You know, we started off okay, and then we lost our way a little bit early on. A lot of misplaced passes, but we got to grips with it. And I was just pleased that that element, we was able to just tick that element off as well because you're hearing so many things about Man United losing there, Spurs losing there and, and, and all this. And we've been able to just dispatch that pitch and just adapt to it, which I think has been really pleasing. So how are you feeling in general off the back of that? Can we play on AstroTurf every week, mate? <laughs> Can we play on AstroTurf? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll echo your thoughts. Um, like the first 10, 15 minutes, we, we did have to adapt. We, we, we started to struggle a bit. They were starting to get shots away. You could you could feel their momentum building, uh, their confidence building. Obviously, we, we know the form that was in, well, the bottom of their, their bottom of their league at now. So they're in real poor form. Confidence is low, but then you could just feel it, them getting back into it. And they've got massive, massive Premier League, uh, Premier League, Champions League experience. So you're thinking, right, this is this is getting tough now. This is getting tough. But we 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 turned that tide, we rode it out, we turned it, and then we started getting our game going. You know, we, we were feeling that pitch and we were starting to get the vertical passes going, the movement, the, the tempo quickened. And young boys really started to, to struggle to deal with us. Um, I thought we looked more... Athletic, I thought we looked more physical, and and it started to show us that as the first half progressed, and as we started to get shots off, and as we started to make make our way into the penalty area and get into the game, then young boys started to started to struggle, and and once we got that opener, that was it, really, wasn't it, mate? The sort of the, the floodgates sort of opened for us attacking wise, and and we were really really penetrating them all through that all through that first half up to half time, and you know really. We should have been freeing it up, really going into the break, shouldn't we? Um, we'll, we'll go on about the referee, I'm sure, but, um, you know, for Watkins' goal to get chalked off. So, uh, yeah, the first half, absolutely magnificent, mate. Yeah, it was epic. So, let's smash the likes. Our first win back in the so-called Champions League. I want 1,100 likes. Smash those likes. Comment your thoughts and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, like you say, I, I, re I was really pleased with that like adaptive period that we had in the game because you could see that we were... Some players, I felt like, early on, had just got it straight away. I thought Concert got it straight away. I thought like his zip of his passes were, were brilliant. And then it just took a couple to just start to feel their way into it. I thought Rogers was just easing his way into it. Um, and I've got to say, one player who, this might shock some, that was the best I have ever seen Jacob Ramsey play. Because forget him having goals in the past or forget him having flurries. He, he bossed that game for me, and along with a lot of others. But Ramsey was incredible. Turning, driving, 
His touch was fantastic. His vision was just unbelievable. So I want to give a big shout out to Ramsey because I thought he was so, so sharp. And another big shout out is to Austin McPhee. Again, another set piece. The first Villa goal. And what a fitting way to Gary Shaw, number eight, that our number eight, Yuri Tielemans, was able to back. And I'll talk about Gary Shaw at at the very end, because I do want to speak about Gary Shaw. But that first goal, you know, we were playing for Gary Shaw and what a fitting way for us to score our first goal. A quick free kick, one one with Luke Dean and McGinn. McGinn puts it in there and Tielemans just absolutely rifles it. And it's a textbook McPhee goal and another one, another creative one. And... I'm just loving it. And when I was watching the Arsenal game and I was hearing the commentators for the Spurs game and they were talking about the Arsenal set-piece coach and now they've put McGinn's, not McGinn, McPhee's name in there and they're like, McPhee and this guy are like at the elite now of set-piece attacking coaching and defending as well. So um, a great, great goal. And then, like you say, Ron, we just started to just churn things out, didn't we? Like, the openings were coming and, you know, the second goal was a random one, weren't it? You know, but it was, again, instinctive work from Watkins to sort of get that back pass. Probably should have been a penalty. He was sort of holding on to it. And then Ramsey, just clever, just takes it off him, puts it away. And it's 2-0 and we are absolutely cruising. And I just think... Fair play to us. The handball one was an handball, was it? It should have. Was, was that for three nil? The handball that was for three nil. That would have been yeah. Going yeah. into the break. Well, it, it weren't handball, was it? No, not a chance. And you know, not to jump too far ahead, but the, the one that did get chalked off in the second half, I don't understand why the referee went to the monitor and had a look at that one when he didn't even have a look at the Watkins one. For, I'm, I'm not on my own here. I'm a look. It wasn't handball, no. was it? <laughs> no, no. Far from that it. That third yeah. one, that third one, wasn't handball. No, it no. was no, was no, not handball. Just... And uh, it, the thing that got me with that is I was super calm, super like fine with how we were playing. But you know what football's like. Like if you've scored a legitimate goal, it cannot be chalked because if they second half come out, tweak it, get a fluky first goal, two one, crowds up two two, it like carnage could happen. So, you know, I, I really didn't. Well, is this naive of me? I really didn't expect to be talking in the Champions League about poor officiating. You know, I mean, the ref at the start of the game, I quite liked what he said, like when they were doing the coin toss and he was like, if there's anything you need to talk to me about, don't, you know, come up to me and talk to me. And I thought, do you know what? That's quite good because he's like working with the players, getting a bit of a rapport. And then that happens and I'm like, oh, forget it. Like these guys are clueless. So, yeah. Uh, But yeah. First half then was very good, wasn't it? You know, away yeah. from home, Champions League. I, I was just really, really pleased with it. Um, so I think that was uh, a massive, massive positive. Second half, it had a bit of a lull, didn't it, at the start? It was a bit just feeling it. It was just, we were just riding the emotion, were we? I think we managed the second half really well. I thought it was very mature, Luke. I thought it was very intelligent. I thought it was energy saving. You know, you know, the press sort of like sat back and it was more positional, you know, blocking off passing lines and stuff like that and and, and letting them have the ball and, and, and try and work an opening and, and putting them under pressure really to come at us. Um, I thought it was really managed well. And, and the last 10 minutes, I thought, you know what? We've seen out this game like a Champions League team, Luke. You know, like we've been playing this, like we were seasoned, like we've been playing this level season in, season out. And yeah. I, I just thought it was proper established performance and, you know, mega, mega proud of the team. And obviously, just, you know, we, we soaked up all their pressure and never really let them back in the game. We, we brought Carlos on at half time and we got minutes in his legs and, the, you know, the rest of the subs come on and, and then... The man, the beast, the, the transitional monster, he, you know, he's absolutely unreal, Anana. And the, the, the finish, the finish for that third goal, Luke. Oh, I mean, do you know mate. what, though? I mean, 
you've just said lot. Like, we don't, you know, we look like a Champions League team. That's just like music to my ears. Like I've, I've dreamt of, I've dreamt of hearing that all my life. Aston Villa look like a Champions League team, but there was a moment before that, and it was John Duran's goal. And as soon as that ball fell to Duran, I was like, I was celebrating because I knew it was it in the back of the net. It's just that good. And it was handball on Onana. It did go back a long way. But I just don't know where the cutoff point is to go back. Do you know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't have said it was too far back either. Because to me, it was a blatant handball in the build-up. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what you think. Like if, if that was on the other if that was the other way around. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'd be calling for it to be pulled back because I think yeah. it was because we retained possession throughout that whole movement up to the goal. Now, if we would have lost possession, even just for a brief second, then I think all right, that's that's the cutoff for it to go again then. But because we retained possession, we worked the ball in the box. You go back to the point where we won the ball, don't you? And even though that was a bit bit more further than usual it, it was it was a it was a big handball and a big moment that that started off that move but just to echo your thoughts on Duran mate as soon as that ball come and you've seen the number nine coming up to it <laughs> oh my god and and you know the power that guy generates is absolutely incredible and it's such a shame <laughs> it's such a shame that goal has been short out yeah the, the visual of it the slow-mo from the camera angle of where he hits it, and it curls in that bottom corner, and and there he is he's on the flipping advertising. You know, you know he's on the advertising though? board. So when he look, it's like so footed up there in front of the ultras, and you're like, oh my god, that's our Duran. That is. He, he's been sat on that bench, right, watching them ultras bounce up and down for sixty minutes. He yeah. scored a goal and he's gone straight up to them <laughs> and mounted the billboard. Yeah, what what a guy! What a guy! He's just like he's mad, isn't he? He's he's absolutely mad. Um, He's wild. He's wild. And then his his new mate Onana. Again, we'll touch on another player that I thought was tremendous in this game as well in a minute. Onana just absolutely blasts one and bottom corner (laughs) and three nil job done. Wrapped up. See you later. Get out of there. Um, so, yeah, fantastic goal from Onana. I mean, if we have a look at some of the stats now from the game, a momentum bar away from home in the Champions League, Aston Villa in the blue. Uh, this is coming from our mates at Sofa Score. We've got young boys that are in the green as well. If we have a look at some more of the stats. We've got uh, 53% possession for Villa, 2.18 XG, 20 shots. We've had 20 shots away from home in the Champions League. We've made 405 passes, 10 tackles. We had 13 free kicks, 20 shots, 7 on target, uh, 8 off target, 5 block shots, 11 shots from inside the box, which is quite telling as well. You know, sometimes when you see those stats and they're all from outside, 11 shots inside the box uh, is just absolutely mental. We can see here where Villa attacked from. So it was predominantly down the left-hand side. We had 34 touches in the opposition penalty area. Um, We can see here we've got 76% final uh, third phase passes. We've got 25% successful crosses. We won 44% of our duels. If we have a little look now at some of the average ratings for this game, and you will see that there are some familiar numbers for familiar players. Yuri Tielemans, exceptional. Like, But this is now becoming normal. This is a normal... He, he, he bossed it. Absolutely bossed it. I thought Pau Torres was really, really calm. I thought Martinez's handling was good, like I've touched on earlier. Ramsey, for me, the best I've seen him play. By a mile. Morgan Rogers doing Rogers things. He was exceptional as well. Um, and I just thought we were absolutely fantastic. We did make a change at half time, which was probably slightly needed a little bit. Oh God, I thought he did that okay. He struggled that for, for two phases. I felt like he struggled with. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, we made the change and, and he'll learn, he'll develop, he'll grow. And if we have a little look at Villa's average positions as well, you can look at see how high Luca Dean is number 12. His average position is really, really high. We've got Ramsey playing on that inside area as well, which we, we know that he can do. McGinn sort of like hugging the touchline in the Bailey role. Interesting that Bailey didn't come on as well. So we've re fully rested Bailey, who was on the bench. Rogers, epic. Who stood out for you then? Because I've mentioned Ramsey, but I mean, I'm just going to have a quick look at his stats here. 95% passing accuracy for Ramsey. Four out of his five ground jewels won. Successful dribbles, one out of one. I, I thought he was class, mate. Yeah, yeah, fully agree, fully agree. Look, he's come back in at the start of the season. We've eased him back in, but West Ham... Uh, Leicester, he's made an impact every game, hasn't he? he, he you know, he's getting assists, he's getting goal creating actions. He, his stats for, for, for those games, incredible off the bench. Um, I was hoping against Everton it, it was going to be the performance to announce himself back and real kick on. It didn't quite, didn't quite work out for him on Saturday, but tonight, Luke, echo you, mate. He was absolutely. <laughs> Unplayable, unplayable. You look at that, 95% passing accuracy for a uh, attacking midfielder who who will look for vertical balls, through balls. That that rating is, is is tremendous. And the intelligence for that second goal, Luke, you know what I mean? You could have just stood there and, and waited for the penalty to come, but he, he was on yeah. it in a flash, wasn't he? And, he, you know, he dragged the ball and popped it in the corner and, and it's 2-0. You, you've eliminated any, any doubt of the penalty not being given, of the penalty being missed. You put our side two 0 up in the Champions League, and you know for for a Brummy lad as well to do that. You know we talk about Gary Shaw and and Tillemans having his number to score. You know we've got we've got another Brummy there scoring in in a European competition, and it was it was just so good to see. I, you know I, I love the kid. I love the kid. Absolutely love him. Love love the way he, he plays football, and he's got a guy just to the right hand side of him in that like <laughs> false number nine, number ten position, who who is equally. Uh, absolute physical attacking monster. He's, he's incredible. He's, he's formed this season. He's come out like a house on fire, hasn't he? I think, I think he just needs a goal now. You know, it's been five games. I think he just needs a, a goal just to real kick it on. But his contributions are unreal. Just in that space, in between the defence and the midfield, he's elite, isn't he? He's elite so yeah. far this season. He, he's unstoppable when he gets motoring his, his turn of pace his, his physicality when he is ball carrying like yeah you know, people are just bouncing off him man you know look, you know you go back to that Arsenal game when Thomas party just was like launched to the ground you know he, he's just been phenomenal and people are really really starting to take notice of him you know the, the co-cons um McCoyst and um Rio Ferdinand were really really bigging him up and yeah he, he, he deserves it all coming his way. And, and Watkins as well, you know, part of that trio in attack, he, you know, his hold-up play was getting very was getting very up to speed. I think, you know, he's, he's easing his way back in. You've seen the ice strap on, on his Achilles. So you, we know he's got knocks and we know he's been managed well, but you can feel his confidence growing and, you know, he should, he should have had that goal really. He took that took that so well than he on the half volley as well so his confidence is growing and yeah as an attacking outlet when you allow us the opportunity to transition we're gonna absolutely rip it to pieces because that is <laughs> that is what this team is designed for isn't it and built for and i think champions league especially away from home and, and looking at our fixtures we're going to be a very dangerous proposition for, for everyone in our in our fixture list yeah, we are. And uh, at the time of recording, I mean, we've got to mention it while we've got to mention it while, while we're here. We may as well mention that we're currently sat top of the Champions League. So there we go. Absolutely amazing stuff. But now I'm just really, I'm really pleased. I'm really happy how we've gone about our work. Very professional. And this is just a this is just a thing that's going to grow into this Champions League now. Important we got the three points because we know who we've got coming up next. Bayern Munich, going to be a very, very difficult game. But we've got that little bit of sort of like confidence, but we've got that little bit of um, just that little bit of a sort of like a, 
uh, not a free hit, but you know what I mean? Like, because we've got the three points now, it, if we hadn't, then it would mean that there's more pressure on it. And I think yeah. we're going to be very dangerous in this competition. So some very, very sad news that came out a day ago was the passing of an absolute legend within the Aston Villa sphere, within our worlds, within our hearts, Gary Shaw passed away and he, he you know he's an absolute icon he's a villa legend and whether you are too young to see him play you know who he is and and i think that's a testament to the the man of 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 how good he is and the legacy that he will leave behind him because this guy won it all he was the pfa player of the year he was the european young player of the year and if we're talking about how that would compare to modern day, I've got names written down here who've won that award of Ronaldo, the R9 Ronaldo, Cristiano, Messi, Baggio, Van Basten, Maldini, Robin, Rooney. This is the level of player that this that this guy was. And I think he has a part in, in all of our hearts. And it's such a shame that at, at such a young age, that he's passed away. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to see him, but I've been watching videos of him and, and how good he was. And I've seen one today of when he was playing against Nottingham Forest and he just picked the ball up deep, started the move, a long busting run, got into the box, absolutely buried it. You know, this kid was a player. And I think when you're looking at the, the testimonials that have come in of, of people talking about him and you're hearing like, sort of like ex-pros and, and opposition fans sort of saying how good he was at that time. That shows how good he was. And, you know, I just wanted to sort of pay tribute to him, really, because even though I didn't get to see him play, to me, I was really sad and upset by it because, you know, he's, he's the first one within that sort of 82 team that has passed away. And, um, you know, it was on sort of like the eve of us getting back into sort of like European Cup Champions League. So uh, I just wanted to say a few words on him. I don't know whether you want to mention anything, Ryan. Yeah, I think um, the outpouring of emotion um, from the footballing world just shows you how respected Gary Shaw was. I think most Villa fans have got a story. Every Villa fan's pretty much got a picture with him. You, you only have to go on social media and everyone's sharing all, all, all their all their pictures, he, he had time for everybody and he'd speak to everybody. And um, for me, I, I met him as a young kid. Like My, my, my dad idolised him. I, I heard so many stories about Gary Shaw from my dad, from my uncles, that they all love him. And my dad sort of got to know him not personally as they got older. He, my dad done a lot of work for him and always spoke fondly of him. And, and when I met him, I was only like a 10 year old lad. And my dad said, let's go and meet Gary Shaw. And I thought, who's Gary Shaw? He went, Gary Shaw, son, he won the European Cup and I, I got a right education off him about who he was and Gary was telling all these stories with my dad and it was just, I was mesmerised, I was in awe and and yeah, it's so sad on, on the eve of us coming back into this competition to, to, to lose one of the, the youngest members of the squad and, and a, a player that made a huge, huge contribution to, to the league success, the, the European Cup, the European Super Cup. It, an absolute legend and and the word legend it probably gets bounded around a bit a, a bit too loosely nowadays but like even even for the younger generation now who, who probably have only realize his achievements now you know you, you understand what he did don't you you want without seeing him play or without really knowing too much about him just this huge outpouring it just opens your eyes to how much of an icon he was for everybody. And like I've seen um, the videos of Ian Taylor away in Switzerland and he'd done a, a massive speech and the Villa fans were just pure silence. You know what I mean? These fans have been on the beers all, all, all day, but Ian Taylor spoke about Gary Shaw and there was all silence and everyone was listening in. And, and that's a huge, huge mark of respect. And um, I, I'm sure that the club will have something planned for, for Saturday against Wolves and and especially against uh, Bayern Munich. Yeah, I think, you know, all of these players that achieved that success in 82 are in every Villa fan's hearts because 
we are immensely proud of what they did and what they achieved. And, you know, we obviously we still talk about that today. And on, I've heard that there's going to be something that's happening on the day of the game for that anyway, sort of inside Villa Park with, with all of the team. And, and I've heard Mortimer saying that, you know, it's going to feel really strange now that he's not going to be there. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to say a few words. And if you've got any stories that you want to share and you want to write them in the in the comments to this, it would be great to to see some of your stories and some of your memories if you met him or if, you, if you've watched him or you watched him live, I'd love to read them. So I think we'll, we'll end it on, we'll end it on that one. I think what a fitting way for the new players that we've got to pay tribute by going out and winning and sort of delivering. And I just think it's absolutely massive. So thank you everybody. Up the villa. Up the villa.